Okay, hello and welcome back to the Toffee Blues YouTube channel, your source for all things Everton. My name's Thomas, back with another Extra Time video on the chat today and possibly for the first time ever, this is the third Extra Time in a row when we're all in a very good mood. Everton have won their first home league game of the season against newly promoted West Brom. Uh, joining me today to dissect the game is Terry McAllister and Owen Parks. Another brilliant performance in the end, a bit shaky for the first 20 minutes and I'm, I'm sure we're going to get into that now, but I'll come to you first, Owen. What were your kind of just general thoughts on the game uh, as a whole? I'm I'm pleased with the result, but I still I still think the, I'm more pleased by the fact that I feel like we haven't even hit our best form yet for 90 minutes. So I think that's a real positive. I think Everton of old, I think even with that red card, if they go down two two yesterday, they probably don't win the game because they can't break them down. They have a bit, they had a bit of a siege mentality where they thought they'd just go around kicking people, which I was a big fan of to be honest. But I think that's all they had. But I, I, I was really pleased with the results. I, I, I think personally they're in big trouble because I don't see how they're going to stop them goals going. In. But from Everton's point of view, it was just another pleasing performance. The quality level of the team has gone from like there to there in like a matter of weeks. And that's pretty mad to say, considering we've only got three new players. Mm. But I think all in all, really pleased, top the league. Yeah, Terry, do you, do you agree with all that? Yeah, I mean, I was watching yesterday. If that game had ended at half time, I'd have been ashamed. I'd have been like the best teams lost here because the West Brom had clearly credit with its due. Done their homework on Everton. They were playing in that sort of pocket of space behind, um, behind Hammers and leaving Coleman and, and Mina exposed. I mean, Mina was diabolical, wasn't he yesterday? I'm mean, usually a big fan of Mina, but he was awful. Um, and I think they had the best of the game. But just, unfortunately for them, unfortunately for us, they just didn't have a player like like Hamas Rodriguez. He was the difference between the two teams. Um, obviously, then you get the red cards, and you know it's it's cut and dry. The red card. It's you know it's a moment of madness. He's been rattled by by Hamas bumping into him, and he just conceded a goal. He's lashed out. He's got to go. Don't particularly agree with um, Billich being sent off. I don't know. You know. He, I don't agree with what he was saying, but he shouldn't have been sent off. I didn't agree when Ancelotti got sent off after the Man United home game last year. Mm. The manager has a right to talk to the referee. The referees, or at least he should do anyway, unless they're being abusive, which, you know, he was on camera, he clearly wasn't. Yeah, that, that's the problem at the moment, though, isn't it? Because referees have spoken about how managers are meant to approach them in the tunnel, but of course, at Goodison, you get changed in the car park. Like, There's no way Billich could have approached him anywhere other than there. So, yeah, I agree, he shouldn't have been sent off, but... I mean, yeah. the fact that you were saying that Richardson fouled their defender, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't, I, I, I didn't agree personally with with his gripe, but he shouldn't have been sent off for, for me. Um, obviously, Gibbs should have. Um, then, obviously, we come back and out in the second half. You know, we're we're sleeping. We, we're we're not we're not at it. The second we come out and they get um, the free kick, great free kick. Yeri Mina again, awful game. Doesn't jump in the wall. Pickford. I think he, it's a bit harsh to. To like you know, say he could have done better with the free kick. He maybe could have, but I don't think that was the problem. I think it was Mina. So if Mina jumps, he probably gets his head on that. Then about sixty minutes, sixty-five minutes, we score the goal, and the air completely goes out to West Brom, and we just start controlling the game. Then the difference between the first sixty minutes and the last half an hour was unbelievable. Like we absolutely ran the show after that. Like Hamas Rodriguez is just. The West Brom players are playing checkers and he's playing 4D chess. He's just an absolute revelation. Like every time he gets it, like there, there was there was so many like balls he played that didn't end up in goals that I just did. like there was one where he played Luca Dean through and it just bounced off the sides of Luca Dean's boots mm -hmm. and goes through the eye of a needle past two players. And I just think this player is going to get some assists this season. Not don't even think about his goals, the assists he's going to get if we can start slotting, you know, carry on slotting the goals in. Brilliant after that. Like, I'm made up for Dominic Carvalho lewin It's probably the scruffiest hat trick you'll ever see, but they all count. So, made up for him. Um, Michael Keane back on the score sheet. Obviously, he's the pub quiz question who, who, uh, who scored in the Hammers Rodriguez debut goal game. And uh, Carvalho lewin scored an hat trick. Rodriguez scored the other. He was the other one, Michael Keane. But um, <laughs> Richarlison as well. I think he had a good game. He's just trying to force the goal. He wants to get on in the action. He, he scored a great goal, but it was just offside. He just Times has run a little bit wrong, and yeah, 
Brilliant. Another you know, top of the league, 5-2. You know, correct, poor defensive performance, but they corrected it with the attacking performance. There's, you know, there's things you can take on both sides from the game, but great results and um, a great performance from the hour mark onwards. Yeah, we'll go with the first 20 minutes first because it did look a bit shaky for for a moment. Of course, Dian Connor kind of just raced forwards, no pressure on him at all. I want to come to Owen here because Terry's just kind of spoken about it there. Who are you kind of blaming for that first goal? And I mean, maybe even that free kick as well, which obviously came later. But we spoke about Mina. I don't think Pickford's possession was great either. But where, where were the problems coming on their first goal? I think by the time we got in, it was Mina's fault. But I think, I think it comes from losing the ball high up the pitch and overcommitting. But by the but that happens sometimes when you're trying to get an early goal. But I think Mina should just take him out, to be honest. I think he just backs off and backs off. And then Pickford, I think Pickford thinks it's going wise. To be honest, I weren't really convinced by his sort of dive to try and get it. I think, to, to be fair to the lad, though, Dian Garner, I think that was a great goal. I think he took the ball really well. I mean, that's the only thing he did in about the 60 minutes he was on the pitch, but mm. fair play to him, that was a great goal. But I think it was just, I think I think with Alan, I think especially, I think it was not his fault the goal, but sometimes with him being our only defensive shield, when he presses up like that, there's just a huge space. And behind us, Mina should take him out really, but good goal. But I think I think we're going to need to be a lot tighter and a lot more resolute next week. Yeah, because it's interesting you mentioned Alan there because I saw a bit of talk on Twitter about it. I don't know if you've got any thoughts on this, Terry, because obviously he is kind of being asked to play that. Well, when we're playing a four three four three three, he is kind of asked to play that deeper role. But he does like to, you know, close a man down. Chase the game almost. Well, he doesn't chase the game because once he's there, he makes it out. But well, what were your thoughts, Terry, on generally Alan yesterday and Decore? You can add him in as well because both again had they had their quiet games, but they are unbelievable players for us. Like they don't like steal the headlines or anything. But I, th- I was very impressed with them both again. Yeah, they've made such a difference, haven't they? Like obviously, it's not perfect. Yeah, I don't. I think Decore wasn't as good as he was the week before, but I don't think he had a bad game by any stretch. But and and Alan as well. Alan's. Um, Alan's really, really underrated player, isn't he? Like he's made as much of a difference as Hamid Rodriguez, but he just doesn't get the headlines. It's um, it'll be appreciated by our fans because we love a player like that. But like the the match of the day, Sky Sports, they won't they won't acknowledge him as much as you know the the nicer on the ice stuff like Rodriguez. Just really good buys. They look like really good players who slotted in seamlessly, and just they've made other players play better around them. Andre Gomez has started playing well again. Because half because he's in a three and half because he's got better players around him. I know Owen will probably <laughs> play well yesterday. He didn't. He's playing better though, I think. But and crucially, I think Sigurdsson's playing better now. I don't know whether that's the formation change or whether that's the better players around him, but or whether it's just as I've got to pull my finger out now because I'm not going to get on this pitch unless I'm, I'm contributing. But he start like he, when he came on, he played really well. I think so, the thing is with Sigurdsson. Both times we've seen him, well, I mean, obviously we saw him for a bit against Spurs. I didn't think he was great, but saw him against Salford dominating the ball. We saw him yesterday come on to dominate the ball. We, we know he can, you know, he, he can do well when he's on the ball. It's when he's being asked to pretty much do absolutely anything else. That's when he crumbles. But Owen, have you got some thoughts on Andre Gomez there? I, I couldn't tell by your reaction if you, if you had any, you know, kind of reaction to what Terry said. But uh, what were your thoughts on him yesterday? I'm completely honest when it comes to Andre Gomez. Last week at Tottenham, I thought he played well. I don't think he played well yesterday. I thought he left too many gaps. I think there was a time where I think it might have been the second half, it didn't matter because they were down to 10 men. I had nothing left. But the first half, he was just wandering positions and there was just a big gap in between the core right and where he's supposed to be. And they just kept on playing in it when he played out from the back. I thought, I actually, I'm not, I, it's going to be in the comments now, but I actually thought Sigurdsson played quite well to be honest when he came on of course he put in a few good balls I thought he controlled the ball nicely so I, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see him if he continues to play like this coming on if he actually plays over Gomez and that's going to be sacrilege for some people on um, just on Twitter and that but I actually think I actually think he played well yeah and someone we definitely have to talk about is the man that in his post-match press conference Ancelotti compared to Inzaghi, which is not a not a bad comparison at all for a young striker. Uh, Owen, what were your thoughts on Calvert Lewin yesterday? Of course, getting his first Everton hat trick. Yeah, I thought he was excellent. I, I think the most impressive thing with with Dom yesterday was I think he, in the first like three minutes he had that header and he missed it. And I think him of old or any Everton striker of old really 
would have just they wouldn't have had a kick all game after that. But he he just went in and scored the scruffiest hat trick in history since I don't know, I don't think this he was there Calf the fella for Liverpool who scored a hat trick and they were all on the line and he just put them in. I think that was I, I can't from, remember. I think it was against Man United or something years ago, I think. He had a hat trick and they were all just like on the line and he put them in, but they all count and I thought he played excellently well, I think. What ball helped Dom is the extra creativity he's got in the team with Hammers. Obviously, with Charles and creating extra space for him. Um, Decore making late runs. Even Gomez keeping the play nice to make space. I think, I th- I think it's all going to benefit him. Yeah, it, it's interesting that because Ancelotti in that same uh, kind of interview after the match said, a striker's only meant to have one touch. You know, he, he clearly knows the exact kind of striker he wants, and I think we've got that in Calvert Lewin. I mean, the, he clearly puts in a lot of work in terms of his position on the pitch. Um, I mean, when Richarlison found him after that Rodriguez pass that I'll be dreaming about for the next couple of weeks easily. I mean, when he's there, that's all you know, hard work. That okay, he's not scoring the the magical goals where he's beating a man, but that's clearly not what Ancelotti wants from him at all. He wants that player who's just gonna you know, have that final tap in. We know we've got in Richarlison, a, ma- a player that's going to want to take on his man and beat him and get him behind. We, we don't need that from Calvin lewin at all. Um, so I'm, I'm very pleased to see him doing well. I've, I've always been a big fan of him. I know there's definitely some people, and especially in the comments, some people might not like him, uh, despite the fact he scored four goals in two games. Fun? You don't know anything about football if you don't rate a striker who's got his goal return. How much would they be willing to pay for a striker who'd score more goals than him? He wouldn't. Yeah, so I, I I I really like him a lot. Terry, what were your thoughts on Calvert Lewin yesterday? Just a vintage Calvert Lewin, wasn't it? He you know he he grafted his ass off. He you know he was one balls in the air. He created space for other players, and when he when the chances came, he was in the box. He is what he is. Like people want him to be something he isn't. Like he gets the ball, and if he's got to take someone on or or run in run in with the ball, forget it. It's not going to do it. Like he's he's he can't take anyone on. That's not his his strong suit, but. That you know, he's always in the right place at the right time in the penalty box. He's a nightmare for opposition defenders because he's so energetic and so physical. He absolutely, he's he is absolutely perfect for the other players we've got either sides of him, Rodriguez and Richarlison. Both feed off him as a player, and now that he's got that creativity, he's scoring goals. He was scoring goals last season as well. Um, since Ancelotti's came in, and I just. I know. I, 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 it's it's sort of like a. I listen to other football podcasts, and whenever he comes up, other supporters of other clubs go, "I don't get why Ever- they just don't understand why a lot of Everton fans don't like Calvert Lewin." Um, and I don't either. Like I understand. I wasn't the biggest fan of him at the time. Like I thought, I don't see it. I don't, like you know when he was under Coom and stuff. But he was a kid, and he's developed, and he's got better since then. And I'm willing to go. Okay, he's he he wasn't good then. I didn't really rate him. And now he's good, and now I do rate him. Like he, he's not Lukaku. He's not going to pick the ball up and just like storm into the box. But you know, he never, he's never. Yeah, he's never been that player. You know, no one, no one ever moaned when we had Jelovic scoring goals when he first came in that he didn't pick up the balls. He can create his own chances. Why do they? Why is it like a problem for Dominic Carver Lewin? Is it just because they can't like they can't get out of that frame of mind where you know he's. They don't rate him, or is it because we didn't pay a lot of money for him? I'm a big fan of Moise Keane, but the pe- people who are like trying to, you know, she won't like she won Moise Keane into our team when he hasn't done anything and he's not playing well when he comes on. Like Calvert Lewin is miles better than Moise Keane, but you wouldn't think so the way some of our fans behave. Yeah, if there's fair. people who want Moise Keane to start over Calvert Lewin, I suggest go and watch hockey or something, it's just ridiculous. Yeah, we've got we've got a very good balance in the attack now. I mean, as you mentioned, people are looking, you know, for Calvert Lewin to be like Lukaku, you know, pick the ball up like that Chelsea goal in the quarter final where he kind of just took on half their defence. We know that's not the player he's got, but we've got you know we've got Richarlison to do that. We've got Rodriguez on the other side; he's going to find the pass. We've got a very balanced attack now, which is not something we've always had to be fair. And I think the the change in system benefits them all massively. But you mentioned Moise Keane there. Of course, he came on as a substitute as well as Alex Awobi. Uh, Owen, did you have any thoughts on substitutes in general? Obviously, we've spoken about Sigurdsson, but Awobi's back. Did he did he do much for you in the kind of twenty minutes he was on? Yeah, I, I, I I'm 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 a big fan of Alex Awobi. I think if he uses well, I think he can be a really important player. I think 
I was really looking for him to come on centrally and start, you know, dictating the play and linking up with Dom. But he played that wide. I thought he did all right. Moyes Keane, he didn't really do much apart from that ridiculous thing at the end, but he didn't really have to. Um, the thing with Moyes Keane is that he, he just looks miles off the pace from everyone else on the pitch when he plays, but it's lost cause. But if people think, honest to God, if people think he should be starting over Dom, I really suggest you don't watch football because it's just night and day the difference between the two of them. Yeah, Terry, what were your thoughts? Were you impressed with the Wilby when he came on? Impressed or unimpressed, he didn't really do a lot, did he? Like, mm. uh, but he didn't. He wasn't like particularly bad either. It, first game back after a little injury, first game of the season for him. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how much he gets used because obviously we've got that three-man midfield now, um, and they've you know very distinct sort of templates for each player. You know for a fact that you know when Gabavan comes back, who he's going to be you know coming in for when he comes on the pitch. Um, Sigurdsson seems to have like you know carved himself like it's going to be him or Gomez that that you know like mostly I know he came on for Takora yesterday but it's going to be Sigurdsson and Gomez for that attacking member of the three it's going to be um, Gabamon with Allen or as well as Allen if you want to go a little bit more defensively it will be don't really know where he's going to play because he came on yesterday for Richarlison but. I, th- I think as the season goes on, I think we may see Anthony Gordon going in there as the second choice to to um, Richarlison. Obviously, it didn't work like that yesterday, but it's a long season, and, and Anthony Gordon's a young player. I think if we, um, I think if we would get money for a Wobie, I think we'd probably get a lot more money for a Wobie if someone was willing to buy him than we would for Sigurdsson. And I think they're both vying for the same positions, really, Sigurdsson and Iwobi, and I think we've got more chance of selling him because he's younger, so don't really see where Iwobi's going to play. If we do end up keeping him and no one comes in for him, I worry that he's going to end up being the right-hand side understudy, you know, like he was at the end of last season. He's going to be going to come in for Rodriguez, which probably won't suit him, but, you know, don't think anyone's going to be able to step into Rodriguez's shoes. But anyway, I think Iwobi could, get, could have a part to play this season if he stays I just don't know where it'll be because there's other players even in the second choice slots ahead of him in all the places he plays Yeah so just kind of ran off the video of course six points in two games find ourselves top of the table um, next up we've got Palace and well we've got Fleetwood in the cup but in terms of league we've got Palace then Brighton oh no we're looking to really kind of build momentum now I mean I'm not saying we're going to win the league by any means but obviously really good start back to back wins can we just carry on this form I mean because then obviously we've got the game what fifth or sixth that no one really wants to think about yet but Palace and Brighton coming up what, what are your thoughts on that? I think I think I think we'll be Brighton but I think next week will be quite tough because We'll be playing the team that can actually defend and they've got a bit of an attacking threat now this season. Um, I, I think we can win it because why can't we? We're top of the league and we've beaten everyone easily so far. But that, I think that'll probably be our toughest test so far just in the way they'll make it difficult for us. But who knows? We can win there. If we get an early goal, we'll win. Um, they score early, it'll be a nightmare, but we'll see. Yeah, Terry, thoughts going into the next couple of games from here? Yeah, just just echo what Owen said. Like, I think Palace will be tougher. I, I can't understand though anyone had them to go down before the start of the season. Like, Again, no, people don't know anything about football, but no chance. Me. I think we'll um, we'll have a real test against them, and it, it, just because. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> Next door neighbours mowing the grass, so it would have mowed all over me points. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. Um, I don't see us getting the, the joy attacking against Palace as we did in the previous two games because, you know, they're not soft. They, you know, MacArthur, McCarthy, you know, their middle three of, of just destroyers, they're not going to give Hammers Rodriguez an inch of space like um, Tottenham and, and West Brom have. So I think we'll, uh, we'll be in for a tougher test and I think it'll be more about all the players stepping up. Like, we're going to need to see more from, from Richarlison maybe and more from our midfield uh, three in terms of goals because I think that's where it's going to um, where it's going to be crucial the midfield battle Brighton I mean we're at home are we at home? I don't think we are yeah. home yeah so I I hope and expect to win that uh, but Palace I think would be a tough game because they've started really well and they've they've got you know street smarts haven't they compared to other teams yeah so 
There you have it. That's our thoughts on uh, the uh, game, the win, 5-2 win against West Brom yesterday. Uh, really good start of the season. Let's hope we can carry on this momentum. Of course, we've got Fleetwood in midweek in the Cup. Uh, we're going to be previewing that as well. So thank you very much for watching. Check out everyone's social media and join us next time on the Toffee Blues. Go, 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 go.